Neither team able to build much of a lead up to this point as we start the second quarter. Here's Neal. You know, Kevin, in his third year in the NBA last season, Russell Westbrook really blossomed into a player that you could call an all-star. He played at a high level, career highs in assists and points. So with Westbrook on the bench, this is who Scott Brooks has out there. Ibaka at power forward, with Perkins at center. Harden out there with Derek Fisher, and it's Cephalosia in at the small forward spot. More on Westbrook, Steve, also had his best field goal percentage and free throw percentage to boot. Well, his free throws uh, are so important because he's athletic and he can attack and get to the rim so often. Uh, I would like to see his field goal percentage go up a little bit, uh, though. He's, uh, you know, he's in that 44% range. Uh, I think he can get better with his shooting, and that'll come as his career goes on. And a chance here to catch up with the fourth member of our crew, Doris Burke. Hi, Doris. Kevin, for Tim Duncan, who's now in his 15th season, the question is about to arise like it does for all other great players when the walk away from the game. What Duncan said, he's planning to play, quote, till the wheels fall off. I have a plethora of knee braces depending on what my outfit is that day. And guys, he has three of them he keeps in his rotation. He's trying to get the last mile out of those veteran legs. More power to him. Thank you, Doris. Well, he's so smart. He's got the length and the skill. But uh, because of his intelligence, he's a player who has made an impact even as those legs have started to go. Kevin Durant's checked in for the fun. Daquan Cook comes in for James Harden. Now Leonard. Still looking to get on the scoreboard. Down to five on the shot clock. Shoots from the baseline. Again, the miss by the Spurs. Scott Brooks, winner of the 2010 Coach of the Year Award. He and, of course, Kevin Durant have been a big reason why the Thunder have moved up the ladder to become one of the league's elite teams. And Neal gets to Green. The pass to Bob. They kick it out to Green. This is it to Neal. Goes up on the wing, and he hits the jump shot. Back to Brooks for a second. It's been amazing to see him transform his team from what they were, you know, Steve, to what they are now. Well, every year they've taken steps forward. And, you know, now they're poised to become one of the elite teams in the league. It gets a lot tougher, though, from here on out. The honeymoon is over, and it's time for them to, to get to that elite level. And they've got to get better. They have to make some internal improvement. Tavo Cephalosha has checked in for the Thunder. Harden comes in for Daquan Cook. Then for the Spurs, Tim Duncan, he's checked in for Matt Bonner. And Tony Parker is subbed in for Gary Neal. And stolen by Perkins. Great defensive work right there. The quick hands lead to the turnover. Good foul. Make him earn the free throws. Don't let this team dunk. I like that. That's a smart foul. I mean, it's a lot easier to dunk it than it is to hit two free throws. Make him earn them at the strike. And how about that surprise trade? At the trade deadline a year ago, Kendrick Perkins going from Boston to Oklahoma City for Jeff Green. And I think uh, the Thunder really believes that Perkins can be their missing piece. You know, they knew they needed help down low defensively and with size, and Perkins is that guy. Shot clock at six. Parker, he's covered by Fisher. Chains is up, and that one's good. Parker, talk back to Perkins for just a moment. You know, his, his playoff... Uh, calculator was a little bit up and down there and I know they made the trade in midseason with Boston they liked him initially uh, take a look at where he fits right now you know that's a good point Kevin um, on the surface you thought it would be a nice acquisition I still think so again you've got to give these things some time he brings experience he brings championship pedigree and he brings some physical presence to the middle that I think can be helpful now you have to figure out how to best integrate that into kind of a greyhound type athletic young developing Oklahoma City Thunder team. I thought he was at his best when Garnett was right there and they're barking back and forth and setting that Boston D. Hey, that's a very good observation by you. You make a few of those on occasion. Sometimes I do. I read your book. That's why I know that stuff. <laughs> From 20 feet out, and again, it's Tony Parker. Parker's got four points now in the quarter. He's put on an offensive clinic. They've got to deny him the ball. And if that fails, then double him, Steve. I mean, they can't allow him to continue to hurt him like this. 
And Doris Burke has some force. Hey, Doris. Well, Kevin, most NBA players will tell you that one of the toughest arenas to play in in the league is in Oklahoma City. The Thunder have found success in their new home. They are consistently one of the top teams in attendance, and last year was no different. It has been likened to a college atmosphere. As Cole Aldridge said to the fans, no doubt the NBA's loudest fans are in Oklahoma City. Guys, we can't deny it. Thanks, Doris. Well, he might be right about this Thunder crowd. I mean, there's no question they are one of the loudest uh, crowds in the NBA. So much energy. They just love this team. And remember, it's the only show in town here in Oklahoma City. And the rejection by Ibaka. The Thunder leading by six. Dishes it to Perkins. He kicks it to Hart. Picked up by Ginobili. Now here's Durant. Defense right on him. And here's Harden for three. And again, no good by Oklahoma City. Goes up. Ginobili can't hit. Ibaka with the ball. And Kevin Durant with the slam. Easy finish there. Defense was helpless. Here's Ginobili. Six points for him. I'd like to see a two-for-one situation here, Clark. Yeah, I agree. I think it's always good to give yourself that last shot. Let's see if they can extend their lead to double digits. Kevin, yeah, I don't think there's any reason to think they can't. Not the way they've been going. And Ibaka kicks to Harden. And Kevin Durant with the slam. Now let's check out the Sprite Slam Cam. Come on now, I didn't see. Can you believe that finish? <laughs> Boy, a little bit of flair and flavor at the end of it. Oh, that'll be a fan favorite. Yeah, right that now. was not your average typical dunk. And the rejection by Ibaka. Westbrook gets to Durant. And the first one drops. So it's both teams making substitutions here. And that's good as he hits both of his shots. Here's Ginobili. Shot is no good. The clock runs out and we're heading to halftime. Durant doing all sorts of things. 12 points and a couple of assists. Passing and free throws, those are two areas where you love to get production. Yeah, the, the passing gives the offense flow, and the, the free throws give you easy points. So it's been a, a nice night for him so far. It's the Thunder. They lead by 12. It's Friday night, and you got a date with the NBA. It's the HP Halftime Report. Oklahoma City up on top against San Antonio. Phenomenal work on the defensive glass. They're boxing out. They're hauling it in every time. We've seen Kevin Durant producing at a high level against the Spurs D. He's got a dozen points and has contributed with the assists as well. For the Spurs, though, they've looked out of sync. Seems a little like they're sleepwalking out there. Not a lot of energy, getting outworked and out-hustled. Tim Duncan hasn't been an impact so far. Not many positives for him so far. Just one bucket from the floor. Already some highlights from these two on the night. They're both leading their teams in scoring. And that just about wraps it up for us here in the studio. Now let's get you back to Kevin and the crew for the second half.